Assalamu alaikum. I hope you're doing awesome today. So now I'm going to read to you the English translation of a statement that is written by the awaited Imam Mahdi Nasser Muhammad Al Yemeni on the 27th of July 2007. Titled More Details About the Hollow Earth in Its Words. Part 2. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. From him I seek aid and from him I receive an inspiration of the true clarification of the secrets of the Holy Quran. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon the seal of the prophets and messengers Muhammad and upon his pure family and upon all Muslims who worship the Lord of the words alone. The land of rest for the creatures is the land furnished with greenery. Allah the Exalted said, And the earth he has laid out for the creatures. Therein is fruit and palm trees having sheaves, in grains having husks, in sweet sunny plants. Surah 55, verses 10 to 12. Its inhabitants were the jinn. Then God made our forefather Adam the caliph over the world of the jinn. Allah commanded the angels to obey Adam, the caliph of Allah inside earth. But Iblis, Satan, refused and asked God to give him respite. That is because God cursed him and commanded him to get out of it. And God fulfilled his request so that he may increase in sin. And God promised to get him out, humiliated and defeated. That will be the end result of the battle between truth and falsehood. In its appointed time, in the book inscribed has come. God postponed his expelling until the day of the first resurrection, as he said. He, God said, you are among who are respited, until the day of the time known. Surah 38, verses 80-81 But it was a challenge between the Lord of the words and his enemy, that is because Satan didn't ask to be respite out of asking for God's mercy. Instead, he did this as challenge. Therefore, Allah cursed him in the word of the exalted, whom Allah has cursed. And he had said, I will surely take of your servants an appointed share. Surah 4, verses 11, 8. Then Allah answered his request and said, get out of it disgraced and defeated. Allah the Exalted said, He said, then get out of it, disgrace and defeat it. However, follows you among them, I will surely fill hell with you altogether. Surah 7, verse 18. But if you follow the text of the Quran, you will find that God has already delayed Satan's expelling until the day of the time known. And he will expel him, defeat it and humiliate it. The evidence that God has delayed his expelling as a test for Adam and his wife is as Allah the Exalted said. Then we said, O Adam, indeed this is an enemy to you and your wife. So let him not get you both out of the garden so you would suffer. Indeed there is enough for you not to go hungry therein nor to go naked. In that you suffer not from thirst therein nor from the sun's heat. Surah 20 Verses 11, 7, 11, 9. After a short time, Satan pretended to regret disobeying his Lord's command and started advising Adam and showed that he is obedient to Adam's commands so that Adam would think that Satan has repented to God and has become a trustworthy advisor. All this was just lying only to deceive Adam and his wife. He just wanted to fool them into believing that he has become a trustworthy advisor. Allah the Exalted said, And we certainly created you, then we have given you human form. Then we said to the angels prostrate to Adam, so they prostrated except for Iblis. He was not of those who prostrated. He said, What prevented you to prostrate when I commanded you? He, Iblis, said, I am better than him. You created me from fire and created him from clay. Allah said, Descend from it, the garden, 
for it is not for you to be arrogant therein. So get out, indeed you are of the abject ones. Iblis said, Respite me until the day they are redirected. He, God, said, You are among who are respited. He said, My Lord, for you have let me go in error, I'll surely sit and wait for them on your straight path. Then I will certainly come to them from before them, in from behind them, and on their right hands and on their left hands, and you will not find most of them thankful to you. God said, Then get out of it, disgraced and defeated. Whoever follows you among them, I will surely fill hell with you altogether. And, O Adam, dwell you and your wife in the garden, and eat from wherever you both will. But do not approach this tree, lest you both be among the unjust. Then Satan whispered, suggesting to them both in order to make a pattern that which was concealed from them of their bodies. He said, Your Lord didn't forbid you from this tree, except that you two should be two angels or be of the immortals. And he swore to them, Indeed I am to you from among the sincere advisors. So he made them fall with deception. Then when they tasted of the tree, their bodies became apparent to them and they began to fasten together over themselves from the leaves of the garden. And their Lord called out to them, Did I not forbid you from that tree? And tell you that Satan to you is a clear enemy? They said, Our Lord, we've wronged ourselves, and if you do not forgive us and have mercy upon us, we will surely be of the losers. Allah said, Descent, some of you are an enemy to some others, and for you on earth will be a place of settlement and enjoyment for the time. He said, Therein you shall live, and therein you shall die, and from it you shall be brought forth. O children of Adam, we've sent down upon you raiments to conceal your bodies in its adornment, but the raiment of piety that is best, that is from the signs of Allah that they might remember. O children of Adam, let not Satan tempt you, as he got your two parents out of the garden, pulling off from them their raiments to show them their bodies. Indeed he sees you and his companion from where you do not see them. Indeed we have made the devils a lies to those who do not believe. Surah 7 verses 11 to 27 and now I have a question to you. If God has already got Satan out of the garden, how did he return to the garden and took to Adam and his wife and swore to them, Indeed, I am to you from among the sincere advisors? I will answer it from the Holy Quran. Allah indeed left Satan in the garden where Adam and his wife were. Allah the Exalted said, Then we said, O Adam, Indeed, this is an enemy to you and your wife, so let him not get you both out of the garden, so you will suffer. Indeed, there is enough for you not to go hungry therein, nor to go naked, in that you suffer not from first therein, nor from the sun's heat. Surah 20, verses 11, 7, 11, 9 Or do you think that Iblis spoke immediately to Adam and said, Your Lord didn't forbid you from this tree, except that you two should be two angels, or be of the immortals. And he swore to them, Indeed, I am to you from among the sincere advisors. Surah 7, verses 20 and 21 He did not say this to Adam until after some time passed after pretending to Adam and Eve, showing regret about his disobedience to his Lord, for not obeying the commands of Adam. Then he pretended to be obedient in following their lead, so that they believe his deceptive plot, which was what he was going to say to them after he gains their trust. That is why Allah the Exalted said, And he swore to them, Indeed I am to you from among the sincere advisors. Surah 7 verse 21 So he made them fall for deception. The point where you people have been misled is the mention of the garden in the story. So many of you thought that it is the garden of refuge in the heavens, 
but that is at the lottery of the utmost farthest boundary. It was never mentioned in the Quran that God made Adam a caliph there, but in the Quran Allah repeatedly said he made Adam a successor on earth. The Quran also mentions many gardens on earth, as when Allah the Exalted said, So we got them out from gardens and springs. Surah 26 verse 57 In the family of the Pharaoh is meant here. As well, Indeed we have tried them as we tried the companions of the garden. Surah 68 verse 17 but you thought that the name garden in the verses is only used for the garden of refuge. Nay, but it is used in the Quran to describe any green land with trees and fruits. But this garden is the hollow earth, which is furnished with greenery. It is not flat, but spread and leveled out. And therein are fruits, palm trees, and pomegranates. Rather, it is the garden with sweet scented plants and it exists inside earth, and is found deep below the layer of volcanic rocks. The layer of volcanic rocks is not far away from the surface of the earth, while the garden below the soil is far below by a great distance, deep inside the earth. However, layers of volcanic rocks are relatively close to the surface. The Quran mentioned different words in one verse, a world in heaven, a world on earth, in a world below the heaven, and a world below the soil. To him belongs what is in the heavens, and what is on the earth, and what is between them, and what is below the soil. Surah 20, verse 6 It is the land that Allah mentioned in the Quran. And the earth he has laid out for the creatures. Therein is fruit and palm trees having sheaths, in grains having husks, in sweet scented plants. Surah 55, verses 1 and 12. It is inhabited by the word of the jinn, and then Allah made Adam his caliph over them instead of Iblis, Satan, who did shed blood and cause mischief in there. Which is why he said, He said, See this whom you have honored over me? If you delay me until the day of resurrection, I will surely seize his descendants, except a few. Surah 17, verse 62 In this land spread with greenery is a leveled out bed, and Allah the Exalted said, And the earth will spread it with greenery. So how well do we level out? Surah 51, verse 48 it has two gates, one gate at the end of the earth, at the north pole, and another gate at the end of the earth at the south pole. Earth is not perfectly spherical, but rather a spheroid. This hollow earth has two gates, therefore two sunrises and two sunsets. So when the sun sets at the southern gate, it rises again from the northern gate, and if it sets at the northern gate, it rises again from the southern gate. And so, this land has two gates, and the greatest distance there is the distance between these two gates. That is why on the day of judgment, man will say to his devil companion, Oh, would that between me and you there was the distance between the two sunrises. Surah 43, verse 38. This is because the greatest distance in earth is the distance between the two gates. They are the gates of the hollow earth and are located at the extreme northern end of the earth and the other one is at the extreme southern end of the earth. And the dam of Dhul Qarnain is located between two barriers, meaning between the two hemispheres of the earth. Allah called them the two barriers because each of them blocks the sunlight from the other one. So half of the earth is in darkness while the other half is lit during daytime that is regarding the surface of earth. As for the dam, it is between the two barriers inside a tunnel inside the cavity of earth. Dhul Qarnain made a dam between them, leaving Gog and Magog living on one side of it and the rest of that world living on the other. 
And so this is the land with the two sunrises and the two sunsets because of the two gates. While on the surface of earth, there are sunrises to one direction, east, and sunset on the other side, west. Hollow earth, however, has two sunrises and two sunsets. Therefore, Allah the Exalted said, The Lord of the two sunrises and the Lord of the two sunsets. Surah 55, verse 17 While the outside of earth has only one sunrise direction and one sunset direction, Allah the Exalted said, The Lord of the sunrise and the sunset. There is no God but He, so take Him for disposer of your affairs. Surah 73, verse 9 O oh people, you are arguing with me about signs that can be confirmed in reality if you only knew. If you were to look at it, you will find the truth of the interpretation in reality, just like how Dhul Qarnain found out about that during his journey to the ends of the earth, north and south. Then he went out with his journey inside earth's cavity, hollow earth, and found people between the two barriers of earth. I ask you by God, where are Gog and Magog? They surely are where the dam of Zulqarnain is. So where is the dam of Zulqarnain then? And why have our satellites not detected it? Because if it was on the surface of the earth, we would have seen it from space. But it is not on the surface of the earth. It is under the ground below the soil where Gog and Magog are. Know you that they procreate from copulation with any and everyone. That is the law of the Antichrist, spreading fornication, so that a woman carries different children from different races, and so her offspring is a mixture of human and jinn devils. They carry out their fornication activities continuously while screaming because the devils excite and incite them to sin with vigorous incitement. The Russian researchers have heard the voices in this underground world after the Russian scientists dug many kilometers in search of minerals in Siberia. But instead, they heard sounds from another world, and they were surprised. While others like Al-Zindani, Abdul Majid Al-Zindani, presumed that these are the people suffering in hellfire. But I disagree with this, and I say, these are Gog and Magog. The screaming made by them because of the excessive practice of fornication is seldom. And the sounds are mainly sounds from the echoes in the cavity of earth. But Al-Zindani claims that they are the sounds of people suffering in hellfire. We have already clarified to you where the fire is in my statement denying the torment of the grave, the whole of corpse. Nay, the dead are punished in hellfire, and the torment is for the soul. And there is no difference between the torment of the soul and of the living body, because all senses are felt by the soul. When the soul leaves the body, the body feels nothing, even when it burns, even when it turns to ashes. And we have clarified before where hellfire is. It is above the earth, in space. Below the heaven, as God the Exalted said? This is so, and indeed, for the inordinate ones, is an evil destination. Hell, they will enter it, and wretched is the resting place. This so let them taste it, scalding water and foul prolonance. An other torment of its type, in pairs. This is a crowd bursting in with you. No welcome for them, surely they will enter the fire. They will say, nor you. No welcome for you, you brought it up upon us, and wretched is the settlement. They will say, our Lord, whoever brought it upon us, increase for him double torment in the fire. And they will say, what is the matter with us, that we do not see men whom we used to count among the evil ones? Is it that we unjustly took them in ridicule? Or has our sight failed to pick them out? Indeed that is truth, the dispute of the people of the fire. Say, O Muhammad, I am only a warner, 
and there is not any God except Allah, the one, the overpowering, Lord of the heavens and the earth, and what is between them, the Almighty, the perpetual forgiver. Say it is tremendous news, from which you are turning away. I had no knowledge of the assembly on high when they were disputing. It has been revealed to me only because I am a clear warner. Surah 38, verses 55 to 70. Whoever thinks deeply about these verses that speak of the dispute of the people of the fire, then finds the verse saying, I had no knowledge of the assembly on high when they are disputing, Surah 38 verse 69, will become a clear to them that the truth of the night journey Isra of Muhammad, the messenger of God, may God's blessing and peace be upon him and his family, and it would become clear that the fire really exists below the heaven and in space on high from our view on earth. And the people in hellfire are an assembly on high in relation to the people on earth. The verses spoke not of the dispute of the angels, but of the dispute of the people of hell. And if the reader thinks deeply, they will understand the separation between the torment of the Day of Judgment and the torment of Barzakh after death before the Day of Judgment. That is in the word of Allah the Exalted, in other torments of its type in pairs. Surah 38 verse 58 Then Allah talks about the dispute between the people of hell until you reach the following verses. I had no knowledge of the assembly on high when they were disputing. It has been revealed to me only because I am a clear warner. Surah 38, verses 69-70 The Messenger of Allah, may the blessings and peace of Allah be upon him and his family, told you that on the night of Isra and Ma'raj, the night journey and ascension, he passed the people of the fire. So he found them all in hellfire, not scattered in their graves. I hope those who seek the truth do the research for voice from hell, cries and screams, scientific discovery. And they will find a recorded tape with the voices and sounds of millions underground. This is undoubtedly a fact. I give you a ruling regarding their matter that they are Gog and Magog. And I disagree with Sheikh Abdul Megid as in Dani, who says that they are the people burning in hell. The verse is clear and straightforward. It says that the fire is in a higher space above earth. The Quran didn't say that the hell fire that has been promised to the disbelievers is in the interior of earth. Rather, it is above the earth and below the heaven. And Muhammad the Messenger of Allah passed them and saw them during his Mi'raj, ascension, in line with the verse. And indeed to show you what we have promised them, we are well able. Surah 23 verse 95 so go to Google, search and look for hell sound from Siberia diggings or voice from hell cries and screams, scientific discovery, and you will find it to be the truth in reality. Your brother, Imam Nasser Muhammad al Yemeni. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.